Okay, so you're not an expert on wells. Welcome to the club. It's fairly normal for rural landowners not to have their brain wrapped around this. Everything is out of sight and below the ground. It's difficult to learn about something that we just can't see. As a matter of fact, 10 years ago, even I didn't have a clue. Now, it's not super complicated, but ignorance isn't bliss either. So what we want to do is we want to pass on some simple knowledge and recommend some simple steps so you can have a secure water source for your family. But you must first know your static water level. It's the first thing we ask well owners. So let's do a quick overview of groundwater, wells, and static water. Once you got this, we can get you into one of our three well pumps. Not a rubber stamp, one size fits all, but the ideal pump for your well. Everybody understands groundwater. There's just a few people who don't realize it yet. Let's show you what groundwater is with this can of Dr. Pepper. The crushed ice in this glass represents the ground. Now don't think ice, think sand and gravel instead. It's actually the same shape. One is crushed ice, the other is crushed rock. Now there's space between the sand just like there's space between this ice. This space is called porosity or void and in the ground it can hold tons of water. We stand upon this ground every day just like this Lego man stands on this ice. Water percolates down through the ground until it hits solid rock, then it forms an underground aquifer. Aquifer, groundwater, and water table, they are all the same name for this body of water found underground. To access it, you need a well, and you need a pump. It's that simple. Now say I have 50 feet of porous sand that is water saturated underneath my property. Now let's say the porosity or voids in that sand is only 10%. Do the math and the volume of water would be the equivalent of my acre of land being covered in 5 feet of water. That's up to here on me. That's a lot of water. Actually my well accesses all the groundwater all around me. Basically all this land would be covered in 5 feet of water. Now we're not talking thousands or even millions, but we're talking billions of gallons of clean drinking water that can be accessed by this simple hole in the ground called the well. But you need a pump, and it better be a hand pump during emergencies because your electric pump is worthless when things go bad. Now there's nothing super high tech about a well. It's just a hole in the ground that's deep enough for the aquifer to create a constant pool of water in the bottom of it. People have been digging them and using them for thousands of years. During the pioneer days, wells were hand dug and were up to four to six feet in diameter. And they were lined with stone or timber to keep the hole from collapsing. And you lowered a bucket into the well to draw the water. This well is probably well over a hundred years old and it still has water in it. It's a super reliable source of water. That's why there's 18 million water wells in the United States. Super reliable, clean water. How far down the water is from the surface is what's called a static water level. It can be 5 feet, it can be 205 feet. It all depends on the geology underneath your property. Your well and your neighbor's well can be very similar if you're on flat ground. It can be very different if your house is in the hills. And the surface of the water in that aquifer is going to be the same level as the surface of the water inside your well. These levels will always equalize. It's just physics. So when you take the cap off of a shallow well like this one, you can often see the surface of that pool of water. So how far down this pool is, is again called a static water level. And this is the super important information that we need to configure a hand pump for your well. I can lower a tape measure into the well and see it hit the top of the water. Eleven feet down. The static water level of this well is eleven feet. Outside the well casing, if I dig down 11 feet through the dry sand, I will hit the top of the aquifer. Then the sand and the gravel is water saturated from 11 feet all the way down to the solid bedrock. In this case, I think it's several hundred feet. Now if I pump out 100 gallons from the well, 
100 gallons from the aquifer will re-enter the well through the open bottom of the well. This is called recovery. This is measured in gallons per minute and should be on your well drillers report. Remember water levels in the aquifer and water levels in the well will always equalize. This is why your well has a constant pool of water down there and why it's a great water source. Outside the well, the aquifer or water saturated sand. Inside the well, it's just water. Top of the aquifer, 11 feet down. Top of the water in your well, 11 feet down. Static water level, 11 feet. Now the total depth of this well is 60 feet. So that pool of water in this well is 49 feet deep. There's a lot of water down there. Now with shallow wells, often an ordinary tape measure can be used to measure the static water level. You can actually see the tip of the tape measure hitting that surface of the water like we just demonstrated. Now we measure static water all the time, so we have a 300 foot fiberglass tape with a big honking weight on it. If you can't see the surface of the water, you can hear it splashing on the top of the water. If you're too high, it's not going to make a splashing noise. If you're too low, it's not going to make a splashing noise. Right at the surface, you can hear that splashing. And don't worry about it, sound travels super good in pipe. So you'll hear it over 100 feet down, no problem. Now, if you don't have a fiberglass tape, you can do the same thing with a stout nylon cord and a weight. And what you want to do is, again, he listen for that splashing and tie a knot at the surface of the water, pull it out, and then measure whatever means uh, you have available. On rare occasions, you may not be 100% confident that the sound that you hear is the weight splashing on the surface. Don't worry, some simple math will save the day. Lower the weight into the well so that it is the deepest it has ever been. Then note the depth, in this case, 100 feet. Then pull the tape out and notice where the tape starts to get wet. The tape will often have little specks of rust on it where this starts. In this case, it's right smack dab on 20 feet. Now subtract the wet measurement from the original depth and you get 80 feet. That's your static water. Just about every state that we've had a chance to look at has some sort of database of all the drilled wells in their state. Uh, it's part of the geographic information system. You can often get lucky with just uh, typing in something as simple as well, information, and then whatever state you live in. Now each state is different with their geographic information system. Uh, Montana has a groundwater information center. Uh, we're going to click on that. Virtually all the websites that we've looked at have a mapping application <clears throat> where the wells are superimposed on a satellite image of the state. This is the easiest version to use. Uh, it's very easy to look up your neighbors as well. Um, so this is uh, what we recommend. Again, every state is different, but in Montana, the Groundwater Information Center uh, wells is another click here. Now here we have a uh, satellite view of Montana. Uh, most of these satellite maps and tools uh, have these options available. Uh, one of the things you want to do is look at a base map. We'll do the down arrow there, and we're going to select streets. These are the types of maps that you can use. Uh, streets is what most people are very familiar with, so we select that base map. And there's often a layer option. We're going to turn off all the wells. Uh, so we're, we have an uncluttered map, satellite view. We're just going to start zooming in. Center and zoom. We're going to find my well. So this is, uh, I actually live right around here. So now I'm going to turn the wells back on. You can see all these dots appear. And uh, those are the wells that are listed in the system. So there's nothing right on my property. This one is the closest one. We'll click on that one. So this is the guy I purchased land from uh, 25 years ago or so, Stan Craver. Um, some quick information about the well. Uh, exact locations are sometimes a little fuzzy. Um, but this is the guy. Um, and you can click on this one and get a quick summary. 
Now I would definitely print this out for your records if you do not have it ready, but what we're looking for is uh, the static water level, and that's the most important information for a hand pump in a well. I'll also write down the total depth, because um, that's going to be uh, important information also. And you want to find date, and you know, I can see over here outside of the screen it's 1978 that it was drilled. It's well construction detail. Take a look at this. Uh, we can see that the full depth is 6 inch casing all the way down to 85 feet. Sometimes uh, that casing will change to 4 inches. It will start out 6 inches and then it will change to 4 and that will usually found somewhere uh, on the data report. And again in just about every state that we've looked at uh, you should be able to click on a link where the scanned well log, the original well driller's log will show up. So that can be handy. Again, the static water is going to be listed, uh, the pipe diameter, the casing diameter, and then your geologic information as they're going down. Um, and you can confirm the, uh, usually an address, so this should also be printed out for your, your files. Now, if you live in Montana, Idaho, or Utah, we have detailed instructions on how to uh, navigate the web. Uh, you can also search by well ID, address, or name of the landowner who drilled the well. Finally, during the installation, you can easily confirm that you are in the water by pulling up on the pump rod or pump cable by hand. If water comes out of the pipe, well, you're in the water. Now, keep in mind that it may take many dry strokes to fill the draw pipe with water, but you should feel the pumping getting heavier as the draw pipe fills with water. If you have no water, add another section of pipe and try again. Repeat until you hit the water. After you hit the water, go another 10 feet or so for final installation. Now if you're going for the deepest possible installation and you hit the electric pump or something else, pull the pump up and remove a pipe section. Then you can finalize the installation. Now remember we have three well pumps, a shallow, medium, and a deep well pump. Now that you know your static water level, you can go back to the Let's Get Started video, watch that again to determine which pump is ideal for your situation.